Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're looking at the Assembly 4 Workbench and how to create this dynamic animation with a spring and a bolt and the spring will compress and expand taking the bolt with it and we'll be looking at that next. Okay we're just going to go through the model and show you what parts are in the assembly. So we have first of all the block which sits at the bottom which attaches to the spring and then we also have the bolt. They're all the individual parts and the spring is an adaptive pipe that's recalculated when this movement is produced. So that's the assembly parts and we'll start building them now. If you like this video please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel. I also have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate my contributions to the community and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0 okay so we're going to create each of the models first so I'm going to create a new document and this is going to be the bolt so I'm going to jump over to the part design and I'm going to create a new body and a new sketch I'm going to place it on the XY plane hit OK and this is going to be a very simple bolt and I'm just going to create a circle in the center that's, that's constrained by the center. I've got the auto constraints on, so the auto constraint to the center. And we're going to set this a diameter on there, constrain the diameter. And we're going to do a diameter of say 20 millimeters. Okay, that. And I'm going to close that and I'm going to pad that up. I'm going to hit the pad button on there. And I'm going to pad out to something like 50. Actually, let's go around about 80 millimeters. So, 80 millimeter pad on that. So, okay, that. And I'm going to select the top face so only the top face goes green. And I'm going to create a sketch on that top face. And I'm going to use the circle and the sketch again. And I'm going to come in and auto constrain to that center point of the last pad. Now I'm going to come out slightly and I'm going to set the diameter of that. And I'm going to set it to something like 20, 25. So it's outside that. So this is going to be ahead of the bolt. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to pad that up. And 10 millimeters would do us. So I think I'm going to go for that. So that's our bolt finished. I could come out a bit more, but this is that's going to be enough for the time being. I may adjust that in a moment. Matter of fact, I'm going to adjust that now. So I'm going to double click on that sketch of that last pad and just bring this out to 30. So that's 30 millimeters. Close that. And that's about right. And that's our bolt done. So I'm going to save that now. File, save, and I'm going to place that somewhere. And I'm going to create a new folder and just place it in there. So I'm going to call it Spring Assembly folder. And inside the folder, I'm just going to create a part called Bolt. Save that off. So that's our body done. What I'm going to do as well is I'm going to place that bolt in a part because we need parts to import into the assembly. So we go over to the create a new part, make it active, and we'll just drop our body into that. And I'm going to rename that part to bolt part and rename the body to bolt body. And we'll just save that. So that's the bolt done, that's quick and simple. And now we're going to go on to the square washer that sits on the bottom. 
So again, I'm going to do that as a new document. So create a new document. Just leave the other one open so the other one's sitting there. And inside that, I'm going to, because I'm still in the part design, I'm going to create a body and create a sketch and place it again on the XY plane. Now, a diameter of our circle was 20 millimeters. So I just can create a circle in here, constraint center, bring it out and set that one to 20 millimeters. Zoom in a bit, and I'm gonna create a square around that. Like so. And I'm just going to set these two sides to being equal. So you see the equality constraint on that to make sure it stays as a square. So that will stay as a square now. And I'm going to set one length of this. It's 27, so I'm going to set that to 30 millimeters. And we'll bring this down and I'm going to constrain it to the center. So I'm just going to do that with basic length constraints. I could do the symmetry constraints, but I'll have to place a piece of geometry in here, a bit of construction geometry to actually place that into the center. So I'm going to quickly do it with length constraints. So from here to here, I'm going to put a vertical constraint in there, 15, and also a horizontal constraint in there, or 15 as well. So that's fully constrained now. We can close that and that sketch we can pad up. I'm saying 10 millimeters there and that will do us. It doesn't really matter about scale, it's just the construction and the assembly that we're looking at for this. Again, I'm gonna rename the body to square washer body. And I'm going to add a part in here as well. So using the create a new part. So clicking create the new part. And we'll just highlight the square washer body and drag it into the part. And rename that part. Square washer part. I'm going to save that now. I'm going to call it square washer. And that's our square washer done. So that's another part done. So we've got a bolt and the square washer. And now we need the spring. So for the spring, we're going to gain, create a new document. So for the spring we're going to do something different, we're going to put a body in there from the part design and rather than creating a sketch, I'm going to first go over to the part. Now from this part I'm going to choose the creation of parameterized geometrical primitives. So what we're going to do is actually create a helix in here for the spring and then use that helix to do a adapted sweep across it to add material to it. So we can use the button there, or if we go out to the part, and we can choose create primitives from here. Now the primitives open in our combo view, and we're gonna select the helix from there. Now the radius of this is gonna be about 20 millimeters. So you think we've got the 20 millimeter hole, so this is the same here. The height I'm going to set to something like 40 and the pitch I'm going to set to 10. If I create that, you see the spring is created. So that's our spring created. I'm going to close this down because we don't want to create another one, but now I'm going to actually click on the helix. And I want to show you something about this. So we've got the pitch and the height and these are in relationship with each other. So if I just change the height to something like 80, then we will get more coils. As you can see, we've got more coils added. 
and the height has changed to 280 but we've got to change the pitch as well so if I've changed this to 20 we've now got four coils so we've See? got a relationship there so if it's 40 then I have to divide it by 4 to get the pitch the same with 80 just divide it by 4 to get that pitch so we could come in here and do a height divided by 4 and you'll see that when we change this height to 80 then we've got the correct amount of coils when we click off because it's recalculated that picture has been recalculated and this is what we'll be using in our calculations when we do the the variable and assembly but I'm just going to clear it for the time being so I'm not going to actually do that in here and I'm just going to set them to 10 and 40 the pitch and height and we'll work on that in a moment so we've got the helix and it's inside the body we also need a sketch because I'm going to sweep a sketch across this for the additive pipe so to do that I'm going to jump back to the part design and I'm going to click the model and click the body and I'm going to create a sketch in that body now I want this on a different plane so I want to take this beginning of this coil and place a sketch upon that big, the beginning of that coil so I want it on the XY plane so I can highlight the XY plane come up to here, hit OK and we've got the coil running through the centre so I want to go over to the end of the coil just here and I want to create a sketch now I can have what sketch I want along there this is just a profile so I'm just going to go for a standard circle and I'm going to place it on the start of that coil there come out of that and I'm going to rename that sketch to profile and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure our selected sketch is sitting there selected so select that sketch it's gone green and I'm going to use the Sweep a selected sketch along a path or other profiles, or we can go up to the part design and do a additive feature and an additive pipe. That profile has already been pulled into there on the profile. Pull the profile. Now the object here. Click on object and just select our object here and that object helix has been selected we don't add an edge actually select the object and you can see that's been added there and that's okay that now here we need to make a cross reference copy so that means that it will cross reference anything we do with this helix now the additive sweep will cross reference to it any of the other options would have caused a copy of this helix and we wouldn't have been able to change the original helix and allowed for this to work now I'm kind of happy with this but I want this spring to be a bit more larger so I'm going to change that and I'm going to come into my body come into my additive pipe that will contain my sketch and I'm going to make sure if I jump over to the body and keeping that open I'm going to make sure the helix is still available so I can see that and also I want to make sure the sketch is still available so I can see that as well so I'm just pressing the space bar to hide and show these features so hiding that helix so I can see that in there the one we really want is the profile sketch so I'm going to double click that and come in and just increase the size of that hit close and that should recalculate and that's a better size spring 
So that's all good. And we'll just have a look at that in the model. Quite happy with that. And I'm going to rename that body. Spring body. Also going to save the document as well. So file save or control S. And we're going to save that as spring. We also need a part in there, so I'm going to dump a part in there. So I'm going to click on the spring and click on the part. And I'm going to drop both the spring body and the helix into that part. And those are sitting inside that part now. I'm just going to rename that part to spring part. Making sure I save it as well. So that's both the spring, the square washer, and the bolt all completed. So that's the end of part one. Part two is already on the channel and there's a link coming up on screen now, which you can click on and follow along. We'll be looking at the assembly and the animation and using the animation tool and some gotchas around that area. Now, please be aware that animation tool is not the end of the tutorial. We have to actually use Python to drive the animation later because the animation tool is just for testing. And you'll see some of the issues you come across with the animation tool in the next video and how to resolve them. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my site. And also I have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash mang zero and there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that i actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel thanks a lot for watching and subscribing i'll see you next time